Go out and Sonic called me and he said, "You know, I'd come to views. Was there views of the Bukuno Unaves no spare? They're doing the breakfast show, and I think they're looking for someone to run their social media uh, pages for the King's Drive. So I came there, I went that night, and uh, Sonic introduced me to DJ Naves. And I remember Naves was like, "Yeah," and then. <laughs> He's a hustler, unbreakable, a people's person, and a future billionaire. This is the Hustlers Corner with Smoothie Soliope, well known to you and I as DJ Smoo. Hello, guys, welcome to the Hustlers Corner. Big homie Smoothie here. I'm quite excited. Uh, in case you're new in the family or in the movement, This is a podcast that is designed to inspire a new generation of hustlers, and that's all of you guys out there. I know you guys are in different industries. Some of you guys are media, some in fashion, some in music. Some of you guys are dancing. Some of you guys are selling. Some of you guys are in corporate. Some of you guys are unemployed, and you probably are, you know, you you just going through this life thing, trying to find your way or trying to figure things out. Um, that's what this platform is for. We're here to help you, we're here to inspire and encourage you. And we're also here to bring different stories of other hustlers that are doing their own thing as well. Some are very well achieved, some are only starting their journey, some are, but they just have a story to share, to sort of, you know, uh, encourage you out there. Before I continue with um, today's episode, I'd like everybody to um, like, share, subscribe whenever you get a chance. But the main thing we gotta do on the count of three, we go straight to that sharp sharp sign. We click that sharp sharp man. I want those likes. One, two, three, let's go. Click, click, click. Thank you very much. Now I'm sitting with a young lady here who is a, a hustler extraordinaire. She's in the media space. She is very, um, she travels quite a lot. She is uh, a dreamer. She is a, she's a hungry person to want to achieve and do great things for herself. But she'll share with us her story. And there's a couple of other things that we'll find out um, from her uh, as far as this interview goes. Ladies and gents, I'd like to welcome on to The Hustler's Corner. What's this Hope Mbeng? Oh, I love the fact that you said I'm a dreamer because that's definitely one thing I am. I'm definitely a dreamer. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for, for being um, a part of this. We appreciate it. I love it. I love the fact that you always Subconsciously and you keep putting people on. I, I think it's become such a huge part of who you are. You don't even realize when you're doing it. <laughs> so thank you so much once again for having me here. No, I'm in Giabonga. I'm interested in hearing your story. Oh, God. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm loving the things that you're about. Mm-hmm. But I think the main thing would that, that really attracted me to your hustle at first was radio. Mm-hmm. My love for radio. I identify other people out there, whether they're still new, whether they've been doing it for a while, whether they're legends in the radio space. So once I started, you know, taking notice of your radio career, and then all the other layers started peeling off, and I was like, oh wow, there's more to this hustler than just radio. And I, I guess that's why we're here. Radio, sure. So I think maybe before we go on radio, as I'm not going to do a lot of the talks. So a lot of the times with my comments, bang titties. But smooth the shut up. You know, we're going to get cool. I talk a lot. And that's what I want. We want you to talk. All right. So Hope Mbele is a 24-year-old from Mtalu, that is south of KwaZulu Natal, all the way to Kudin. So 26. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was born in Tualume, um, raised there until I was seven, 18. Um, and I want to share a story, Sanko, because I think one thing that you've also shared, yeah. you probably might not want to share it in public, but you probably are more than welcome if you if you would like to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, that is a very personal story. Okay, that okay. was for your ears. Okay, 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 okay. okay, okay. <laughs> it's number one day in my mind. Okay, yeah, guys, well, okay. not today. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm from a very, uh, I think, a well-known family. I say hi, yabo, because in Kulele in Dini no matigis. So my granddad was one of the four founders of even the association. I say hi. Um, so they, they had huge roles within the taxi association and I said hi in Talume. So my mom then also 
automatically. I think that's how my mom and dad met in, within the, the the whole taxi thing. Okay. Uh, so my dad is into was into taxis as well. He started driving straight out of high school. Um, so we were born and raised within Umdilo Matengis. I am the eldest of four, so my mom has four kids, and I'm the only girl. So I'm deputy parent to three lovely boys. Um, and yeah, so I've always had to play that leader role. I think that's where I take it from because my mom and my whole family have been very dependent on me. Which me being like, Kaya, obviously, me don't bazaar, me don't zokat, me don't zopeg, me don't zowenda zongele zinto. But all of that, I think, that built my leadership characteristics. You know, so definitely when the little ma, no baba, and no mkulu anga kuligas. So that's where hope began. Mm. Oh, began. Was I led my taxi? Ni wakula went to a private school um, for eleven years. So from grade R until grade eleven. I feel like grade eleven, and I wasn't happy with my private school. I'd never been in a school with more than two hundred and fifty students. I've never been in a class with more than like twenty five students. So I felt as if. I didn't know the real outside of 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 this 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 cloud that I was in the private school, and I just wasn't doing well, you know. I wasn't doing as well, and I was a straight A student all my life. But my fear grade eleven, something just really changed. I felt as if I lost a connection with myself, and I wanted to explore, you know, being outside of the school. We prefer it. You expected to do all this, so much pressure. Uh, so, so, okay, so, okay, let's do uh, so grade 11, I, my poor is got in and I told my mom that I want to go to a public school for experience, one, uh, to meet different types of people. I feel like I'm in a bottle and I'm in a private school where it's about 10 class in university or senior college. I'm going to be, I'm going to suffer because I've, I've never had to, to prove myself. I've never been thrown in the deep end. And my teachers were like, are you crazy? Is that what you want to do? And I said, yes. So I went to a public school called Marburg Secondary. What is it called? Marburg Secondary. Oh, Marburg. Marburg. Oh, Marburg. In my sec, eh? Oh, okay. <laughs> In my sec. Okay. It, it was a predominantly Indian school. Yeah. So I figured out corner. That's where I met most of my friends. I know you know her. I figured out corner. And I think... That's when my love for media escalated because I've always been asked, what do you want to do after high school? And it's always been, oh, I wanted to be a cardiologist. But I was on the physical science. Hey, put this for big time. Yo, no. <laughs> physical science was my weak point. So I, I got to the school and I met really, really dope friends. Um, some of them, so I remember sometimes people would go to class and we'd be, you know, outside class practicing how to present. Uh, and with a very close friend of mine, Lunde, Sishi as well. All of our other friends would be like, okay, cool, and we're successful, and we're lawyers, and we're like, it's fine, that's what we want to do. Um, and, and that's the thing, sorry to come in there with some of you hustlers who are still doing your or well trying to get into the entertainment business. Yeah. That's what happens. You end up falling into this trap of compete not competing, but comparing yourself mm-hmm. with your other peers who are graduating or getting nice yeah. jobs or buying cars or buying homes yeah. or getting married. Don't fall into that trap, my hustlers. And not only media people, anybody out there, your journey is your journey. And uh, our blessings when they come, they don't all come in as sort of your time is coming. Oh, stable income. You know, nine to five gives you stable income. But so yeah, so in, in that case, in any way, um we were we were told to go for shadowing. One of our ALO projects was with the CEO Shadowisha for I think a couple of weeks, the 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 environment that we wanted to work with in. Uh, so my shadowing place was Ukozi FM. Oh wow! So I went and I shadowed there. 
Uh, I worked at the library I, for a couple of days. Ooh, 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 ooh. There's this guy, I forgot his name now. He's very welcoming to me. Uh, and I worked at the drama department, a cuisine as well. And when I had to write down that report after those seven days of working in cuisine, uh, I knew. I feel like that was the confirmation. I knew. Okay, so track back. Uh, my mom was already in radio. So I was very exposed. So growing up, I was very, I think I was about six, seven. I was very exposed to radio. Um, and this other time, she had a mom, Devorah Fraser, uh, uh, auditioned and I had, to, I was sitting there in the background and I had to do these, these, these voiceover thingies. And say, ah, no, I have to you know? Yeah. So even not that though, because it was really yes. something that I was exposed uh, to. So I knew I loved radio, but I think the confirmation came when I was at the job shadowing. Uh, and I had to write the report. With you, why do you love the space? And, and, and uh, do you see yourself working there? Is it, you know, is it something you want to do for the rest of your life? And I knew right then that this is what I want to do. So, am I that's talking what, about that's what, I like that. <laughs> we, we call it the radio bug. Yeah. That's when it beats you. Yeah, the loom at that time. Mm. And shout out to Cozy. Now I've had a great opportunity to work with oh, Cozy. So today, people, a lot of people still remember some of the work that we, we, we did Okozin and I'll forever be grateful and I'll forever be thankful to Okozi FM. I love you guys and I miss you so much. <laughs> so I'm glad that you also gave another career a boost in the beginning. <laughs> and that time I'm still in high school, imagine. Um, so yeah, I figured I got a grade 12. I finished my matric and um, I went and I applied a youth radio, Ugo Youth Radio, it's a community radio station in Lassakai in Pochipston. DIY, oh, not DYR, okay. Because when no. I hear youth radio in Durban, it's Durban, Durban, Durban Youth, youth radio. radio, so it was Ugo. Ugo. Oh, Ugo. 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 Okay. yeah, Ugo okay. Youth Radio. Um, so my friend and I, we went and applied, literally, so I was in my school in our uniform, I think it was our last week, so I was like, still in this flash. And I remember the guys like, and we're like, yes, but we're really pretty. And at the time, we, we that I remember that was the first thing, but but it's bad. And we were like, oh man, it's like I'm not vlogging. We called ourselves the peaches because we smell powerful. We see, you know, so 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 my bitchy smell like the station. Come on, and it's like ni awanju u u u u u kulumo great. So that's as is kulumo, but suzam. The guy was like, okay, cool. Get into the booth and show us what you got. And my friend and I had so much chemistry, so we just killed it. <laughs> and then he was like, okay, cool. Come back uh, next month. And we're like, okay, cool. Um, at that time, Nangi, Nangi Fage, the application of your pressure. So in the next two months, Baba Vumela would see no application. I'm a and I can move to New York. So I then ended up not working for Uku Youth Radio. Uh, it's just busy, like, actually. The station manager was like, okay, cool. I'm going to just come next week. And had to be that choice. Like, New York Radio, New York. Ah, New York. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, at that time, game, Gahamba, I went to New York. And I did a few things. I did a bit of au pairing. Um, I worked as a paralegal at a law firm in Nakona, Nakona, because I needed to survive uh, in the big jungle and I had no support. So whether it was waitressing, um, and I think that also opened me up to being a hustler, you know, because if I said in Zanga, so I met the most wonderful South African Nikon. And she was like, you know what? You can come stay at my place. Wow. Mama Shengi, God bless her. So uh so I think in Shai Labans of Koka Vanga and Jira and I can look after her kids and I can give them food siblings. So I did that and Nazan Atasha by Nigerian law firm. Uh, and I worked there for most of the time. And siblings are called Nasing Abbas was fun that and it's so I'm going to go to the sing I was going to sing in the music. Now I'm writing music for people. Uh, that's another passion of mine. Oh, you're also a songwriter. Hey, okay. I wouldn't say I'm a songwriter, but it's it's talent that I think I have. Yeah. So I'm singing African Americans with no rap and my rap songs. 
Lol. Oh, and one of the songs. I wish. I wish. Because you was that guy? Is it Quentin? Is it Quentin Muller? Oh, yeah. The guy who was found to be a Drake's ghostwriter. Yeah. I didn't like that. I think that took away a bit from his legacy. Yeah. The Quite fact that somebody wrote for him. And you know how strict you guys are in the hip hop culture. But anyway, Quanta, now you are a poster writer. I'm a BBW. If it's not you, who is the one that likes the BBW? Yeah, so I was writing. I was doing a lot of stuff in in New York. Um, I was doing Fashion Week. Um, I was hosting a lot of red carpet events that were not as big as as you know, or or E Entertainment or whatever. But they were big within Brooklyn and Harlem. Oh, okay, who's this girl? She's hosting. Uh, and yeah, I enjoyed myself so much. Ngabuya uh, again is an incense. I think when we I had the biggest pressure because a lot of people knew that I was in New York. Yeah, bo. So when Boya, they like okay, and then <laughs> so this morning, right? And I come back and Ngaling Funde, I start my degree uh, in business, and then I was also working at one of the platinum groups uh, retail. So yeah, seven are going because finally great. It's a win. Um, so I'm working retail and I'm trying to, to study as well. And I remember telling my friend, we were, we were successful Dean Gobo, a stock move. And I remember telling her, that's where I'm going to work. And I was like, yeah, it's like, what's like, what's back home? I'm like, I'm not going to go to So I'm going to go to I was like, oh, okay, cool. Good luck, all the best. And I think once I said it and I manifested it with my with my tongue, I, I knew it was going to happen. But I knew I did not want any other radio station. So badly. Um, and one day, so Ikaya, this ne this nama comedy nights that we have in one of my mom's bars. Uh go Felix Yes. It was an old friend of my mom. Shout out to Felix. Shout out to King Philly. <laughs> King Felix and I remember I was telling the most I'm a, I'm a adult jokes yeah I'm a adult jokes mm. so my mom kept chasing me out to the puma yeah. oh, you can't be here and I'm like well I'm really old <laughs> but guess it's like my mom go my way and then King Felix my mom started so my mom is almost like a momager she really hustled to put me on as well she had so much hope in me so much faith Wuti you're gonna be big and something that she always told me Wuti she called me Mini Bonang. So oh, wow. she said, she always says, I'm, 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 so you're my Mini Bonang. And she used to call me that. And make Figo Felix, this is my daughter and she really wants to be on radio. So King Phil was like, he was hosting the Saturday breakfast show at the time. This is funny because he then invited me to the Saturday breakfast show, which he was hosting. That was now my very first time on air. Technically, so when you figure that interview, I being, being, I was running a still am, but I was running a natural uh, um, a natural hair product. So being nama products in really, the guy thing wins us. So main interview, I think is all here to showcase my products. We both knew that I was there to get some experience and to see him, but you know, kill two birds with one stone, advertise your product and get some experience and feel into how is it to be on radio. And Fie Lapa, so he gave me my very first airtime on radio. It was Saturday, 8 p.m. 8 a.m. rather, sorry. And funnily enough, that is the show that I'm doing now. Oh, wow. Right? That's the show that I've, my fir- very first stata and atta on radio was on Felix's show, which is now my show. It's crazy. It's so crazy because the same thing happened to me when I was interviewed by DJ Fresh mm-hmm. coming from ATMB. He said, oh, my man, who are you? Where are you from, my man? Yeah. And I was like, ah, no, my name is Spoo. I call, I call myself DJ Spoo. I'm yeah. from ATMB. Fast forward years later, I was doing the very same yeah. show, Afternoon Drive at YFM. Crazy. I, I t- and I, when, when I was told, it's okay, you're getting this show, I had to pinch myself. I'm like, and I, and I told Felix, I'm like, Felix, I'm getting this show. And it's a show that you didn't know. It was the very first time I was ever interviewed. So it's very sentimental to me. I knew and I was there every single day. So you had a side hustle? I had a side hustle. 
I had a side hustle. Mm. Uh, I'm just there and I'm sending my demos and and the Kakasi people are like, no, my girl, no, we're not looking for anyone at the moment. Until I write to Sonic, Sonic, um, you know, he would get into trouble, shout out to Sonic, because he almost <laughs> lost his job because of me. Uh, um, until I, I, I remember having a conversation with Mimi, who was the program's uh, manager. Mimi and I went to petition on Facebook. If I get a certain amount of people to like a post or to send you a certain amount of emails saying why they want me on Kakazi FM, would you give me at least one week during the graveyard slot to just come, I won't touch anything. I just want to observe and learn. And he said, okay, fine, we had that deal. And then I was just pushing everyone, send those emails, let this man know why you want me there. And they would bombard him with emails <laughs> until I got that one week experience with Sonic. And that just grew, you know, from, from one week to now, um, I know how to do the desk and mind just sing a kulum and I say, I do maybe one link or, you know, and I got that experience until it was time to go. Mimi said, okay, cool. You've had your one week experience. Bye-bye. And now this thing, I tasted it. And I wanted it so badly. I continued sending emails and I continued sending demos. And so I think I almost got a restraining order, like, guys, because they're like, yeah, Gubuzala. why are you always here? What are you here for? We're tired of this girl. Um... Yeah, I don't advise that, Ms. Wabosh. I'm like, don't try, don't try this. But no, did I did the same. I used to hang around YFM oh like crazy. I even befriended the DJ. Mm. Same thing you same. did. Mm. And I'd hang around them. Mm. And R- Randall Abrams mm. from Idols, he was our boss at the yeah. time, station manager. But Greg Maluka was the program's manager, took a liking to me as well. Likely, there was a talent search competition which I entered. I mean, that's how he eventually okay. got him. But it's a similar way. And as much as you're saying, Banga Iza Mileon, but like where, where you want to work or where you want to be, to you have to, you know, like engulf yourself in that world. Mm-hmm. Be around those people, research them, follow. You guys are even lucky right now. You've got social media. You're able to follow them. Yeah. You, are able, you know what I mean? Like create those relations. So you're in that world, you know? Definitely. And then one night we were out and Sonic called me and he said, you know, I come to views. Was there views of the Bakunu Unaves Nuspe? They're doing the breakfast show, and I think they're looking for someone to run their social media uh, pages for the King's Drive. So I came there, I went that night, and uh, Sonic introduced me to DJ Naves. And I remember Naves was like, Yeah. And then, Naves and Jan, you know, I was like, No, you're looking for a girl. And he said, Yeah, but I'm not looking for this girl. I'm looking for. So we're like, Okay. Let me, let, let's meet tomorrow or the day after tomorrow for an a, a official sit down. Salipanti, uh, we are busy, you know, we can share this business. So I said, okay, we met and I think they took a liking because then they hired me to do their social media page. And then I think after that, the rest was just history because I was now at Gaga CFM every single day. You know, I was within these people. No, Mimi was seeing me every day. I'm there and I was doing above and beyond, you know, almost lens into lens. And one day someone got sick and they're like, oh, you always here. Come. Umbambele. And that's how I got the job. Wow. Umbambele. And I remember I was stuttering the whole time. <laughs> but because of so, and I feel as if I was growing. And the, the boss was like, mm-hmm, that was horrible. I remember he told me that was horrible, but he said, you know what, next week, try again. And so I kept trying and I kept trying and I improved. And maybe it's, it's, it's very squeaky. So that was also one of the things. We are like, no, cut that down, <laughs> cut that down. And yeah, and then rest was history. Um, then grew within Gaga CFM and that is my radio side of my hustle. That is incredible. Your radio started the hustle. You also told us about your beauty products. Mm. How did you come up with beauty products and what gave you Isbind mm. to start that? And, I, and I'm and i sure this is a couple of years ago. Yeah. 
And now it's starting to become, and, and this is what we've been fighting to make entrepreneurship fashionable. Yeah. It is becoming fashionable yeah. now, which is great. I'm so proud of all of you guys. But I want to know, years ago, young girl as you were, what gave you even that oomph, um, the bravery or the chutzpah to have your own products, you know? So I've always had relaxed hair my whole life until my 18th birthday because being on Kuli Zakaya. So being Kuli Swa in the Zulu culture, Fanelukundi in Bungo. So I'm in matric, and I don't know how to take care of this hair because it's new to me. I've always used relaxer, you know, I've always had straight hair, but now I'm introduced to my natural hair, you know, so I, I like it from scratch, and I, it was dry, I didn't know how to take care of it. The product that I was originally using was for relaxed hair, so mind your son sees and I just started Googling. I started researching. So Google is my best friend. <laughs> yeah. I Google because I know I'm going to get some sort of answer with someone who's going through the same thing. Um, so I started Googling natural products and maybe Zagan Janet's school. Yo. So I found natural products, but I have Biza. And I was like, you know what? Cheap ways. To, that, I remember that's what I wrote. I said, cheap ways to take care of Afros. And a common guy gets certain amount of, I mean, certain oils that you could use that were on the cheaper side. So I just started mixing my own oils, mixing, mixing. And my hair was really growing and it, was a bit, it wasn't as brittle, it wasn't as dry. And then I'd have a band of oh, go on, you should know, and then they'd be like, oh, it's Tobis, Tobis, eh? And then they'd want to buy it from me. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I could get my oils. 20 randy, I'd mix them up, put them in a container, and then just upsell it, 50, almost 60. And then it just started getting a lot of traction, you know? And then I started even doing more research on how to make my own shampoo, how to do certain things. Um, yeah, and then that just grew to, to Cree Cosmetics. So Cree's my third name, Christinate, Jesus. Okay, then C-R- <laughs> C-R-E-E. Oh, okay. So it's, it's, it's my third name, it's Cree Cosmetics. Um, so I'd also like, that's something that I, I really want to continue focusing on and maybe relaunching it sometime at the end of this year because I've never really had a launch for Cree Cosmetics. It's just something that was really my side hustle. One day I'd have people order like six uh, shampoos a day and I'd be like, okay, so people are interested in this. Six shampoos a day for me was a lot. Oh, okay, I'm about to buy odd. And then from Cree Cosmetics, was born Afro Talks. So Afro Talks is then something that I was doing. Afro Talks. Afro Talks. Mm. Talks is in Yeah, Nicolum. in Nicolum. Okay. Mm. So then I find like females in Durban who had similar problems as myself and they'd want to talk about it and they'd call in on air and they'd be like, oh, what do you use on your hair? And I'm like, girl, it's just trial and error at this point, you know? Yes. Open oh, there, like, in there. Um, so then I realized that they were hungry for this. They wanted females that, that go through the same reality as them in terms of taking care of their hair. Then I started doing picnics and inviting them and charging them all to okay, for 100 rand, you're going to get my shampoo, you're going to get a meal, and you're going to get an Afro Talk specialist. So I'd get someone who, who, who's in the business to come and show us how to actively take care of our hair. And yeah, and that also gained a lot of traction. Um, so that's my, that's my natural hair business. That is so incredible, guys, and she's such a hustler because she's also also my take is on man. Oh, everybody, <laughs> man. And I want to talk about that because when no, I heard about it, that's wow, not true. You are also in the taxi business. Yeah, Let, let's talk about that. You own you own a couple of taxis. I do. I, I own a couple of taxis uh, that do the Mtalo Mepo Chepstone routes, and I sit higher. Um, we like, smile and I can't can't share one. Sort of. <laughs> no. Like my mom is known as the beauty queen. Okay. So the beauty queen. And um, like I said, indoor that we were doing since I was young, when we scored in that mama has eight umkodu funa wonke ama coins a big way in a specific way or two random effort. So I was actively dealing with that. You know, so we were very hands-on with the taxi business. Um so it only made sense that I I own taxis. Mm. And I feel like that's a part of me that I'll never let go because it's so close to my heart. Um, yeah, so, my taxi. And you've got how many now? I think I've got. Of, of your own, not of, of my own. Yeah. Ooh. 
Three, four. Wow. I've got, it's, 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 I like it's, that. It's starting. It's starting. And as a Kaya, we're not allowed to have more in Ghana. You're not allowed to have more than four taxis. Okay. Okay. So it becomes difficult. There's so many, there's like 120 taxis in Asikaya. And not everyone needs taxis, mind you, you know? Uh, so to in order to try and even out the business, we have to have a limited amount of taxis. Um, so yeah, I, um, yeah, it's very interesting because when you're in those meetings and you're as young as me and you put up your hand and you're like, ah, we don't even want to know what you have to say. <laughs> They don't take you seriously, shape. I would lie. They do not take you, and it's old men, and it's scary, and you're just like, oh my god. But but don't but don't they disrespect you no. or, or dismiss you? No. Okay, okay. They don't. Uh, they do it in a very friendly way because okay. remember, all of these people are like fathers to me. They're like Omalume, oh, so they're very older. I I'm very loved in Asakaya. I mean, I they always continuously telling me, "What do you? We're so proud of you." I know one of my. One of my taxi drivers apparently said they cut it because whenever I'm on, he just goes and opens the taxi and then I say, Yeah, where's our bus? Our bus is low. My coffee and all that. She's on radio. So it's something we're very proud of. Um, and yeah, I am sort of in the taxi business. It's not sort of. You are in the taxi business <laughs> and I'm so proud of you. And I, and I like that because you guys know I'm, I've always been the poster boy for uh, advocating for entrepreneurship, but more than anything, Getting rid of that ABS, Abantu Bazotin syndrome, because the Sabuti Nishai Ne Hasaliam, because Abantu Bazotin, like a, a beautiful sister like yourself, will be on some Gasab with Abantu Bazotin, do the taxi business, but you have to embrace. You're getting most I mean, like during December holidays, getting Bamba Imo to Asikaya, you know, my dad would be on the steering and most stop, I mean, I've heard like somebody, he put in seven rand, so I, it's never been embarrassing. Mm. It's never been embarrassing for me, Jay. I mean, I always say, in my way, you put me my tumbi, you put me taxi, you put me it's all there for my man. I'm not saying I'm going to go. In my in my, they are fun. And I was we were talking about this a bit earlier. Uguti, I think the lockdown and the whole pandemic has really shown us, Uguti, you have to sort of have multiple streams of income because what if bavalu chala nam change or bavala mai tegi sabanta masako to travel? Where are you going to get your money? How are you going to feed your family? And I think that's also one thing that even now I'm trying to, you know, look for different ways to make money, different ways to grow my businesses, because I'm wise with focusing down here. You know, I mean, you can have things that are your specialties, but it doesn't mean Uti. That's the only thing of Fanulians. And we were even talking about creatives nowadays. Uti, most creatives are people who have office jobs, you know, and maybe Fikekaya, they start creating content. Yes. Because now I think we've had that awakening of yo finalists born with my listeners and Chinese young people yes the other day i was sitting with um ayanda tabeti shout mm-hmm. out to the sister she's doing very very well for mm-hmm. herself uben jela with the corporate job that she had she actually is she has, she's even worked with um l'oreal mm-hmm. worked for l'oreal mm-hmm. but at the same time she always used to just get this you know, but when you belong on tv you belong on tv yeah. don't you get the same comments or wouldn't you like to be on television one day because i believe a person like you is going to do really well. You're very well spoken. You are respectful, you're humble, <laughs> and, and you're hungry and you're young. And I think you belong in this industry. Definitely. Because people are like, what are you doing here? Why are you seven? Why are you doing You should be on television. You should be, you know, you should be hosting. And and I'd just be like, it's not that easy. I'm not looking for it. Just decided it's okay. I've always wanted to be on television. I've had auditions. I mean, MTV Base, um, Channel O, all of these. And remember one one day for they were looking for an MC for the new MTV Base uh, competition search um, presenter search. I mean. And men figure one of the guys are like, yo, isn't this your third time here? <laughs> and I'm like, yes, it is. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, good luck once again. Um, I think I made it to the top five in Durban uh, that year, but it just... And men are so nice because put this way. Yeah. Because I've been trying to 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 break into the television um, industry. world and industry, but and that's that's... Aguka. Aguka. Yeah. And that's Not why yet. and yeah. that's why now we're so blessed with platforms like YouTube where mm-hmm. do your own thing. 
you know, I'm now doing podcasts on YouTube and IGTV and, you know, the magazine and all of that, because until people see you or catch on your, your wagon, you can't be standing still and hoping or it's no one day is on TV, one day is on TV. Do what you can until someone discovers you. Now, I'll tell you what, you're going very far. And I'm saying that... I receive! <laughs> yeah, I've seen them. You're I mean, I, 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 I see people from when they start and I can tell potential when yeah. I see it. Well, did this person belong to this industry and they're going to do well? Oh. You're one of those people. Now, with that being said, let's talk about your other hustle again. Mm. You own a media business that you've just started, which yes. is a youth magazine. Tell us about it. Oh, my baby. Youth magazine is very close to my heart because I've always had love for for magazines and glitz and glam and, you know, what goes into a magazine and uh, who's going to be on the cover. And you just couldn't wait as growing up with, okay, Kubanos with a good tram and, you know, with TV Plus, it's just so many, so much interesting stuff that goes into a magazine. And it was one of my escapes. Um whether I was feeling down or whether I was at the doctor's office, that's the first thing you do. You take on a magazine and you browse. Um, So yeah, I've been wanting to open up a magazine and I couldn't find the right people to do it with. And then Claire's in Jalaban, the lessons in the magazine and they're just like, okay. Uh, Until I met the right team, Zisto, Silo, the whole team, Jay. um, Yeah, and they believed me. They believed in me. They believed in my idea. And I said, I wanted to do I have a magazine that bridged the transition of Mpuma Skole and Mpuma Gametrik and Singing Dalangi Puma Ikbeni, a young adult. Do you understand? Um, and I think it does it perfectly. Zisto is older than me, I'm younger. So we both attract a different type of market. Because um, we get confused. More Puma in high school and you expect everything to just... I know we all couldn't wait to finish matric because he has... It's Impilio Amis with Kala Yemanj. And then you're 23 and you're like, sure, Impilio is not that easy. What do I do? Um, how do I apply places? How do I make up my CV? Uh, how do I network with people? Um, so the magazine covers that from, from your business section to your health section, um, fitness, um, how to eat properly, um, fashion, we've got mixes from DJs as well because we all now live on our cell phones and I wanted to make it accessible to Wonko Mong to or you know, you want something interesting and you don't really want to be on social media, go on the magazine, check what mixes they have. Uh, we had Lemon and Herb, uh, which I love their mixes. We've had people like Lusol, um, Kings Fiso, you know, so from youth magazine then birthed youth sports which is also something that I'm very dear, is very dear to my heart. I love my football and I love sports and I love bantering with, you know, I'm a cheetah, guys at work. And I wanted to do that because it's something that I really loved. So then I opened up the podcast from Youth Sports and yeah, we can check it out on YouTube. It's, it's currently up. And that's dope. And what's the name of the mag? Youth. Youth. Youth magazine. Well, what F like? Is an F for Y O U F F. F F. Mm. Okay. It's pronounced youth. youth. So it's like youth, but youth. Yeah. With an F. And that's just a play on the words. Because youth, Y O O F, is actually a synonym for youth. And it's just a playful. I think when I realized it's like, when it comes to youth, I really like it. The fact that people don't know what it means, mm. but it actually means youth, I like it. And it's just young and fresh and it's. it's Time to start. So I want. <laughs> so I thought that would be a really cool name. It's it's beautiful that you're sharing your story and just some of the challenges that you you're experiencing as you are advancing with your hustle. I'd like for us to talk about um, light skin privilege. I'm sure you're one of the kids that grew up. Oh. You grew up engulfed in that type of a conversation, whether it was a positive experience for you growing up or whether it was a negative experience for you growing up. Here you are right now. And, I, and I'm sure you, 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 the world is evolving in such a beautiful pace yeah. that more and more black people are starting to um, appreciate themselves the way they are. The darker you are, actually, the more awesome you are. But Tina, when we were growing up, there was just that thing you would see, uh, um, blackness wasn't that appreciated. And even everywhere, whether television or even Noma yeah. Sijala 
you know? So, so I love the conversations that are out there. Whether those conversations are uncomfortable yeah. or they're comfortable, I'm sure you've been through same. And, and I'd like to hear your some of your opinions because I'm sure you've probably so, experienced it as well. Light up, yeah, light skin privilege is definitely a thing. I mean, I, I've never understood people that they didn't acknowledge. There's so many subjects and topics that are uncomfortable and people don't want to acknowledge because in some way they're light skin and they feel as if I will, but we've been we've always been equal. Maybe in your eyes, but in the, in the broader society, in television, in you know um, magazines, in in all of these things, it's always been the lighter, you know, the lighter you are, the the closer almost you were to to being umlum, and it's something that I've always, I don't know why people thought it was a compliment. Ugoti, bagbo ugoti, why is almost like not to be colored? You know, and that's a comment that I've always gotten when I was young. I would, yo, why do you like? So, you know, why do you know, why do you associate Uba Motlin or Ubi Kalad? Why Uma Shugut was a Motlin? Why would you put it Umu thing as we Kalad? You know? Mm-hmm. So, even that, you would see the compliment was, no, what's the Pelayam Kalad demand? It's no. because I guess what was done to us. Do you understand? You know? I mean, even songs like Abu. Twan twan twan. We will need one. Twan, I mean, like, you know what I mean? So it's always been that talk, and it's something that, that I always rejected. But even the makala na baba, manda ba miya. Yeah, you say you want to put that, and it became interesting when, for example, when Trevor went to America. Yeah. And one of the things that he said was that I'll finally be able to be black, you know, because <laughs> in my in my in my in, in my own country, we kala diabo, whereas in America you're an African American. Whether you are dark, 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 or you umpofu, you still an African American. Mdomnyama. Mdomnyama. Mm. It's actually a derogatory word, man. It, it's, it is. It is. And, and I think also what was done to us here by the apartheid government is so sad that even here at home, we yeah. still don't. I think our colored brothers and sisters. Yeah especially when they're still young, they don't even see themselves as black. No. And we're all black. And dad. We're all one thing, you know? Yeah, so it's it's it was very disturbing and it's something that I always ask myself, okay, so mom awful how does or dark feel when someone tells me that, do you understand? And I'm so glad that we are having these conversations of of white privilege, of light skin privilege. Um because they're necessary and there's so much unlearning that we have to do as a country and as black folks J because now even with, with throughout the, the the brown skin girl saga so they're like okay cool so that song was for black people you know Beyonce why Palila Banta Batak or Lupita or Kelly Rowland and that's why she mentioned them and not the lighter uh skin people because it's a song for them and it's to uplift them. They've been through so much. It's almost okay. It's katsab. They've been through so much hurting of dark, navy, blue, and And I think we haven't understood a lot of the light skin, maybe females or males haven't understood it, that we have had a privilege. And it's as much as we may see it or may not see it, or that be corner. And only now are we starting to love each other the way that we always should have, you know, mm. whether you talk, whether Mpofu, now we're getting almost as equal opportunities. Um, you're getting your lead roles now, you're getting a dark skin person on your lead roles. And it, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that you don't, in Hollywood, you'd never see that happen, you know? So now that again, Zega, it's such a beautiful time, Joe Bhattu, because we're learning to love ourselves and we're learning to accept ourselves and and not make that comparison of Mpofu, Utak. Mm. You're such a hustler and you only, you said at the beginning of the interview, you're 24 years yes. old. Where are you going? Because I just oh, see a right future for a person <laughs> like you. We are good there, you know? I hope so. I, I believe it so much. I think my name is Hope for a reason because I believe in my hustle and I cannot wait five years from now to be watching this interview and being like, oh, now I've got my own TV show. Now my magazine has grown so much. Um, now I do have a media house. You know, now I'm giving back. I cannot wait. Um, I, I, also, I told you that I'm, I currently have 22 interns for my magazine and I cannot wait till I've got like 200, you know, 
that growth of, of, of feeding people as well you know for them to give back and just grow as black people in media um, I cannot wait I, I look up to you so much I and mean, you've got your own radio station I see myself doing that I see myself one day owning my radio my own radio station um, I see myself in your televisions um, and even just continuing to be an inspiration because I've never considered myself as an inspiration. So when you tell me, what, ah, you're such an inspiration, I'm like, to whom? <laughs> mm. You know? Um, but I cannot wait to continue and just grow within the media field. And in the future. And do you pattern actually? Because our industry sometimes may look good from the outside, yeah. but I'm sure you've been in it enough to sort of get a bit of an experience with it's not as glamorous as you know um as it may seem what then at the end of the day what do you definitely yes. i think if being as paid to get i'm going to be mad you know because i've had to turn down so many deals you know as much as fazan you can get something to i know but start is bonani kanje you know and you just and it's in your heart when you you can just feel that this is not right um males shouldn't be making us go see them first before they offer us something. You know, you should because of my talent, because you believe in me, not because I'm a female and you want opportunity, especially young females. Mm. And you want opportunity to go to law, and should do anything to get there. And I've been very blessed to have a family that no matter how desperate they have my back. You know, I'm from a very hustling family. They have my back. So where they're going this magazine at the end of the day I, I don't have to that values army just to get where I want to be and I like that you just touched on values there mm-hmm. and before as we're getting closer to to the end of the interview what are some of the things that you say practically work for you is it those enzyme you spoke a little bit earlier on about manifesting things yes. and could mind you're also talking about your values mm-hmm. I'd like for you to just um, put it together and, and share with me some of those things because uh, there's a lot of young people out there who are watching even right now. Like they just think we would see I'm also because of or because of but, but I, I would like for you to share some of those things. You know what I mean? It's not easy. I feel my answer is very simple. Unkolunkolu for me because I would not have any amount of faith. My faith builds me. No matter whatever I'm going through and just knowing where I come from and in I wasn't taught to do this. So why um, so it's definitely my faith and just staying true to to who I am. I mean I am and I'm I am a Christian. So I think that also you know it covers me sometimes and I get that protection of because I mean it it won't have that ripple effect. Um, of 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 attracting even isn't dizzy. Aglula, your but is more aglula, especially being a young female trying to make it in this industry. Aglula at all, you get tempted. There are some times where we are born with your bang asang this one thing. Is umzo pumele about this thing is so close. All I have to do is this one thing. But more zaz ugutu ba no kamuga pe and funugiya because I'm a shortcut. I should show her like. When, once you do something a short cut, it's not long lived, you know. So definitely my faith and my family and just the people that also I surround myself with, um, my friends, the type of people I look up to. So important to have my role models. My biggest role model in South Africa, um, two of my biggest role models is this this morning and Unatim Sengan. And she's sitting right she's there. Having, I was like, oh my god. She's having lunch on the other side of this restaurant. And this is Unati. <laughs> so just their careers and what they've done uh, in radio as people. I, I've always looked up to those two females for me. And sometimes I just sort of in situations, you say, what would this Unati do? You know, mm. just because when you have people that you look up to, it's so important for young females. Uwuti, bazaz, uwuti, no. Not, I'm not saying that you want to become someone, but okay, this is the type of person she is, and look at where it's 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 mega And I really would advocate Wuti, find yourself a role model, especially if you're a young black man, find yourself a young black man. If you're from Imlaz, 
Trop de monde qui me semble au coup même là, who has almost similar characteristics as you. Ou bon, not okay. How did they make it out? You know, funny thing is, so definitely those two people, they are icons in my eyes, and I look up to them. So I think it's just those three things: my spirituality, um, my upbringing, and definitely my surroundings, the people that I surround myself with, and the way that I think. Um, I'm always hopeful, no matter. No matter what happens, I know it's okay. It's going to be a new day, it's new opportunities, and yeah. Oh, what an incredible story of a young lady, 24 years old, <laughs> side hustling left, right, and center, just growing Maybe every day. Maybe sounds so good. <laughs> Maybe it sounds like that. <laughs> but that's what it is, though. I think um, we're all we're all just walking this path. Yeah. You know, we're all just figuring it out as we go. Yeah. Um, we we. And as you're saying, role models, mentors. Mm. Some of us are where we are because of our mentors. Abu put up a skydive, you know, and Abu sees Abu Mama a skydive. But some of us are doing things as not as as they were before, sure. you know. So mm. sometimes you're just finding yourself as you go, yeah. you know. We are cool, we are our. Like I said, man, we are not cool, we are fun, we are subum, we are tinti to cover the lepambi, you know. Mm. And that's what you guys should understand. That everybody's got their own path. We are all just walking this journey called life. I wish you all of the best in Danseka. I'm so proud of you, you know? Make us proud as us, your bigger brothers and your sisters. And before we let you go, I'd like for you to look at, uh, let me say this camera. Okay. Right now you're 24. Yeah. In exactly, um, <laughs> in exactly, let me say, in exactly 10 years, or let me say 11 years, you'll be 35. Okay. You'll be 35 years old. We're gonna send you this video. I would like for you <laughs> to speak to a 35-year-old self. So, mm -hmm. and you're going to be watching this. You'll be 35 at that time. What would you like to say God. to yourself? Look at the camera and speak to yourself. Whether it's for two minutes, three minutes, up to you. Mm. Okay, Hope. What it do? <laughs> <laughs> um, you probably are way more successful now. You probably... God willing, a mother to two children. <laughs> and you're probably a mogul. You've got your own business. This is because it's more than one. You've impacted so many lives and I'm so proud of you. I am not going to cry. <laughs> um, I'm so proud of you. And Gaz Woods, you wouldn't have given up. They know you all over the world. They definitely know you. Whether Umuntu say America, no say Kenya, no Mulabi, they know you because of the work that you've done, because of the amount of lives that you've touched and impacted, because of Imsilin Dusuni as Abantu. Um, continue being the wonderful woman that you are. And I love you. And yeah, I hope you've got a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> you do have a lot of money and why am I going to do now? Oh my gosh. And your businesses have grown so much. Youth magazine is known all over Africa. Zonke listening that you had planned now when you were 24, you've executed and the sky is the limit. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> from one hustler, big home, Miss Muda, to another young hustler, Hope Thank Mbele. you so much. This has been the Hustlers Corner. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, I'm Hope Mbele. I'm a radio personality and an entrepreneur and a go-getter. And I have just been hustled on the Hustlers Corner by DJ Smooth.